Hi there, this is a, a short demonstration on how to draw with the sewing machine because so many people showed an interest or were a little bit scared about venturing into this side of using your sewing machine. Um, just to show you how easy it is actually to do drawing, I've got this picture of birds here by May, uh, Raymond Harris and because I'm not really that good at drawing, um, I put the picture, this picture here, on my window uh, with some tape and I put some cotton over the top and I traced it. Here's another one that I've done. So I traced over the bits that I wanted to uh, produce in the sewing and I then added the cotton onto some uh, curtain interlining which I use as wadding but this is cheap as chips so it's it's sort of quite cheap to use rather than the more expensive waddings for projects like this so I just pin it pin the cotton onto the wadding so that it doesn't move around too much and then I start to sew but that's just showing you how you can sort of cheat on how to get your image and you can do this on top of photographs as well. I've done it before where I've put my cotton over a photograph, traced the uh, image of the people that I wanted to put into sewing and that's how I produced my um, stitch draw of, of people. Now before you actually start to do the sewing what you've got to do is drop your feed dogs, they're the teeth underneath the foot and that's what feeds the fabric through. Well, you don't want the fabric to feed through when you're drawing with the sewing machine. You're the person that's moving the fabric. You drop your stitch length down to zero so that um, you've not got big stitches or anything. You are the person that's controlling how big or how small the stitches are. Other than the feed dogs and the stitch length, you don't need to do anything else on the sewing machine other than putting your quilting foot or em embroidery foot rather, or free motion foot, which is, this is the same one as what I've got on the machine. Okay, so we'll put that to one side. Some gloves, I can't find my uh, quilting gloves. I don't know where they are in this room so I'm cheating and using these cheapest chips cotton gardening gloves because they've got nice little grippy bits on which helps me move the fabric around. So before we start on actually drawing with the sewing machine on our actual picture it's a really good idea to have a little practice. Now I draw with the sewing machine quite a lot but before I start a project, I always, always, always have a little practice run to get into the swing of things, to get into that, that zone. Because if I haven't done this for a few days, it's, it's quite easy to lose that. So, you know, just get into, the, get into the habit of having a little practice. Right, we don't need to worry too much about what colour the thread is in the bobbin at, at this stage. I've got black on the top here because that's what I want for the sewing that we're going to be doing today. So I'll just show you basically how you have a little practice run. Put the arm down, get into a nice comfy position because it's very easy to get all stiff and achy when you're doing this because it's it can be quite nerve wracking but just enjoy the moment. So I've got the arm down, even though it doesn't look like it here, it, it is. Now, if you've got a button on your machine that can dictate whether the needle stays up or down, I would suggest you have your needle down. That way, whenever you stop, your fabric, even if you've got the arm up, can't move anywhere. But if you haven't got that button on your machine, just turn the dial here so that the needle goes into the fabric and make sure you do that every time you stop. Right, to start off, what we've got to remember is if we move too quick, we're gonna get whopping big stitches. We don't really want that. Uh, and if we go too slow, we're gonna sort of knot up underneath. So try and find a nice pace. Now I should have been on Strictly Dancing because 
I've got some of the movements already. So mustn't detract. I'm going to start having a little practice run now. So I would suggest that you just move your fabric into spirals, circles, twists. I like to practice writing my name because I'm going up and down and doing straight lines, circles, curly bits. movements you have some movements that are really easy you'll find some that are quite difficult so you'll find the ones that you enjoy doing or you find easier and steer clear of ones that aren't so easy so just practice moving the fabric the needle isn't going anywhere what it's doing is up and down up and down so if that was your pencil, you're moving the paper. So just practice, practice, practice. Take your time. And do that as many times as you think necessary, or as many times as you feel that you're sort of relaxed to have a go. So basically, that's, that's all it is, is sort of curls and swirls and, and lines. I like the back as well, actually. It's quite cool. Right. So when you're going on to your actual, when you feel confident enough, if confident enough to uh, go on to your actual image that you want to do, what I've started, this was one of the first things that I did, actually. I did lots and lots of umbrellas because it looked easy and it looked fun and I think that's pretty cool very easy though what you do is you can trace an umbrella out of, out of a children's book or a magazine trace the shape of an umbrella onto some bonder web and that's glue on one side paper onto the other so do your drawing on the side on the paper side then what you do is you iron that onto the back the wrong side of your fabric okay once that's ironed on it's stuck on you need to remove that paper and peel it off and you're left with just your little fabric umbrella and the beauty of bonzo web is when you've cut your shape out and you don't cut the shape out until the image is ironed onto the back of the fabric the beauty of it is your fabric doesn't fray. Now, that's my third umbrella that's going on here. I've done my first one here because my umbrellas are going to sit one in front of the other. So I've had to think about it. So this one here, which I've done already, that one is done in the background. The middle one here, I've, I've ironed on the umbrella onto there, but now I need to stitch over my drawing now the drawing i've used a gel pen i've used a black one on that it doesn't matter if it's black or red because it's coming off and the pens are called friction pens and they're really really brilliant for drawing and then when you want to get rid of the actual pen marks you put the iron over it and it disappears so what i've done on this one here is i've drawn the bits of the umbrella that I want to, excuse my dog, I've drawn onto the um, uh, umbrella and onto here where I want to put my free motion stitching. Right, here goes, put my gloves on. Put my gloves on there. So I always make sure that I've got a long enough piece of thread before I start stitching. Because if I don't, when I start seeing when the needle starts going up and down, for some reason, when you're drawing with the sewing machine, it loves to come out. And don't worry if your thread breaks quite a bit. 
sometimes that happens i don't use any special threads in particular this is just a, a poly cotton i think but i do use embroidery threads sometimes metallic threads tend to want to break quite a bit sometimes it's just a case of you've got to, got to just keep re-threading your machine but so be it now don't worry about doing exact straight lines it doesn't matter because the beauty of drawing with the sewing machine is if it's a little bit more sort of rustic it gives it a little bit more of a charming appearance so here we go drop my foot down I like my needle into the thread first, get into a position with your fabric where you want to start. I'm quite happy to go in this direction. So here goes. Don't worry about stitching over lines again as well. It really doesn't matter. In fact, it's sometimes nicer because it gives it a thicker, thicker line almost like a pencil line and if you don't go back over the lines perfect again it doesn't matter it's almost a little bit like sketching as well Going. I'm not going too fast and I'm not going too slow I'm just sort of getting it paced so that I can control how small the stitches are just going over my drawing lines here you can actually shade in as well just go over it up and down just Going over it a couple of times as well saves the thread coming out. So I think that's okay. Take my gloves off, cut my thread, beginning. So that's it stitched on. And the handle there. Right, so. I'm going to take this over to my ironing board now and I'm going to iron off the pen marks and I'm going to place on it my last umbrella. Okay, so now pen marks have disappeared and I've just ironed my next umbrella onto there so so that I've got a guide of where I'm going to go with my sewing machine I'm just drawing on the bits of the umbrella and again if you're not sure what I'm you know parts of the umbrella then just look in a book and improvise Now, if I made a mistake on this bit and I thought, oh, I haven't drawn that very well, I would just take it over to the iron, make it all disappear and start again. So can you see? I've drawn that bit on there. So here goes again. Make sure I've got a nice bit of thread there. My foot's already down. I want my needle into my fabric. And here we go. Well, this is a bit of a wobbly line, this, but it doesn't matter. Shape that bit in and make it look deliberate. Nobody will know. Only me.
gloves on. Okay, scissors. You probably noticed so I've got my table here. I never ever sew without my table. I really do. I, I like the comfort of having this extra space. So I think if I could have, if I could have afforded it, I'd have liked one of the, tape, the sewing machines that actually come in with a table. But this is the next best thing. So there we go. Make sure all my threads are cut off. And I'll just take it over to the iron, get rid of the, the pen marks. And there we have it. But just as a little finish off for you, just want to show you how quick and easy it would be if you wanted to add writing. So always check your spelling. I'm not very good at uh, spelling, but I do know how to write raindrops. So I've written the raindrops with my gel pen. Put my gloves back on. Also, the gloves help keep your work clean. And I'm just going to go over my writing now. Okay, that's the beauty of this technique. I've just got to dot the eye. Mustn't forget to do that. Tiny little circle movements. Done. Gloves off. Cut my thread. Oh, excuse me. You can see where the pen mark is still on there. Okay, just going to go and iron that off. And there we have it. Okay, 